Hey, what's up guys? Sears here. Now today I'm going to bring you 15 monsters in OSRS that will surely make you rich. Also, it would mean a lot if you throw a like if you do enjoy these type of videos and be sure to check out the new sponsor to the channel, Amazon Audible. Alright, starting at the worst, number 15, Disciples of Ibn. A decent requirement with a partial completion of Mornings and Part 2. You will have to get 56 plus agility, you honestly don't really need anything to kill these because they're only combat level 13. You might want to use an elf crystal because it will help you get there quite a bit faster and you will do some running so bring a graceful set plus a dose of anti-poison. Jagex implemented Zami Ropes to free to play a couple months ago and yeah they're going for quite a nice price about 4k each set and you know they have 20 hit points so you can just kill them in one hit 4k every single kill. Number 14, the obsidian creatures, I wouldn't normally put these on the list, although an OB cape is like 750k and the shield's pretty expensive as well. I'm sure everyone sat behind the volcano vents and train range on these things AFK at some point in the RuneScape career, you might want to go try it out again. Jagex also added a whole new city to this area with the new Inferno cape release. If you do happen to have a fire cape, you can show the gate guard and he will let you in. You can then kill the higher level Tazars which drop the obsidian armor and have a higher chance at the obsidian cape and the new shield and all that good stuff. Yes, number 13, the famous green dragons. You cannot have a monster guide without these things. They're, they're just too solid. Most players kill the west or the eastern dragons, but you would definitely just want to teleport with the games necklace of the core beast and kill these ones in the middle. If you do happen to have ancient magics complete, you can also teleport up to the graveyard with like 82 magic and a magic potion as well. So that's a very smart alternative method, quickest banking in the game. I would highly recommend a looting bag and definitely bring like super strength and super attack. You want to get the most DPS so you can get the most gold per hour. Also consider bringing a ring of the wealth eye. It will increase your drop rates on clue scrolls and the wilderness all monsters. There's also the new green dragons in the revenant caves which you can use the new amulet of avarice on and get the noted green dragon bones and hides. I would just say green dragons have always been solid and they always will be. I mean each kill is over 4k and it could even be you know 5, 10k. They even added the new and sold heads which are roughly 12k. Depending on your efficiency and your combat level you're going to be looking at 400k to 1 mil an hour. Number 12, the Falador Guards, and before you even click out of this video, hold up, these guys are amazing to kill with a 40 mil drop. If you have the Falador Medium Diary, which is not too hard to complete, you have a 10% clue scroll drop rate increase on these guards, which makes it very efficient to bust out your cannon. This right here is the number one way in the entire game to farm Ranger Boots. You would definitely want to bring a full graceful outfit and a clue scroll like a set in your inventory because you're just going to be getting them so fast and completing them, going back, completing them. And yeah, and not to mention you can get holy sandals, wizard boots, Sammy pages, armadale pages, ancient pages, holy blessings, and so many more items. Number 11, the Skeletal Wyvern. You don't need to kill these on task, but you will need 72 Slayer. You will have to get an Elemental or Mind Shield, which does require the completion of the Elemental Workshop 1 or 2. I probably wouldn't kill these things if I was below 100 combat with melee, although you could be like 80 combat with range and safe spot them. If you are planning on killing these, I would definitely set up your fairy rings to AIQ to the Mudskipper point and then just run into the cave and you're already there. If you do plan on ranging these, there's probably four to five to six safe spots. Although it's always very packed nowadays, you could you could have your trips last literally five hours to maybe 50 days. I've seen Iron Man do that. Also, another tip: if you are going to use melee, of course your trips are gonna last you know 15 to 20 minutes. Definitely bring sharks, not monkfish, and bring your Serp Helm. Just put it on for like two seconds, two hits of the kill, and then switch it off because Zolver Scales are quite expensive and it will venom the Wyvern. The Wyverns have a combat level of 140, 210 hit points, a massage drop rate of 1 out of 10,000, and even drops an elite clue scroll for 1 out of 350. <music> 
Up next, the Wilderness Ends. I would definitely recommend killing these on a Slayer task from Crystallia, because then if you do that, you can get the Mysterious Emblems, which are about 140k each, and you get them quite common. I actually just covered these ends in my 15 secret or underrated money making methods. Definitely go check that out. Some of the methods are like 5 mil to 15 mil an hour. Definitely go check it out. Ends are definitely a solid money making method and quite underlooked, although it is in the wild, of course, but no PKers come out there. I would definitely kill skeletal wyverns or even, you know, some other monster if your woodcutting level is not above, you know, 61, maybe 70 or 80, because once you get 90 or 95, you can be making a lot of gold. Coming in at number 9, Gargoyles, another monster that got its drop table re-updated about a year and a half ago, which makes it very good to kill, especially on Slayer tasks. You don't need to be on tasks to kill Gargoyles, but you do need 75 Slayer, and I also recommend some good melee gear, or gear in general. There is players using range nowadays with a throwing rock hammer, don't forget that. I've forgotten it so many times. You could also bring Guthans to reheal with hit points. I do recommend just getting the Gargoyle Smasher for 120 points. You might want to bring Alchemy as well because Gargoyles do drop a good amount of Rune Full Helms and a Serotim and God Sword or a Halberd. I'm sure many people don't have a Crystal, so a Dragon works fine. I would not bring a Rune. It's just the fact that the monster is bigger than two squares, so you will hit twice and can easily rack up some big damage. There is some drama whether these are monsters or bosses, let me know below what you guys actually think. I guess that's why they call them demi bosses. There is three main bosses in the wilderness, go check out my 15 bosses video if you have not, Callisto, Venonatus, and Viatin. As far as the demi bosses go, there's the Craze Archaeologist, which you would want to use Mage on and Prey Range, the Chaos Fanatic, use Range, Prey Mage, and then Scorpia which is honestly awesome. It's in multi and very deep, so watch out. Some PKers come there. If you do plan to kill Scorpia, it is one of the better demi bosses. although you do need someone with Blitz at least to hold Scorpia while it's coming at you and the healer spawn, but either way, best monster out there in the wilderness, I would say. And not to mention the Chaos Fanatic is the best thing to kill in the whole game to get a pet besides maybe the you know the chompy chick it's one out of 1000 and you can kill like 70 60 of these an hour go at it also feel free to use a cannon helps out quite a bit All right, number seven, the cave horror. Most players choose not to kill these even on Slayer tasks because they don't know how to get there. If you actually go to your, you know, your quest icon, click on the minigame teleport, and then you teleport to Trouble Brewing, and you're literally like 20 steps from the coast, go inside the cave, run to the very end, which is uh, the best spot to kill them, set up a cannon right in the middle, you're good to go. The requirements to kill these are not too bad, and I would definitely recommend getting it done if you are planning to get, you know, a high Slayer level, and Black Mass are like, what, 800, 900k nowadays? They used to be 400k, but it's definitely worth killing these nowadays. They only have 55 hit points, and you honestly don't need any good gear to kill them. You can't even save spot them with range, and a cannon does help quite a bit. Make sure you never take off your Witchwood icon which is replaced for your amulet and don't forget a light source either. K4s definitely drop a good amount of adamant items so make sure you guys bring high alchemy and they drop a whole bunch of clue scrolls, one of the best monsters in the game to kill them so make sure you guys do a clue scroll at least at the end of every trip. Up next, the Spiritual Mage. Most players, you know, kind of underlook this monster, although Dragon Boots are like 450k, and they did re-update the, you know, drop table about a year ago, a little bit after the other drop tables. Of course, they do have a pretty steep requirement of 83 Slayer and also getting to the Gower's Dungeon, although I would kill them in the Wilderness, but then you have to watch out for PKers. If you do happen to get 83 Slayer, I would definitely go kill the Serotomin boss like a thousand times, and while getting KC, I guarantee it, every, you know, trip or two, you'll get a Dragon Boot, and it's a nice feeling, I've gotten many in my life. If the regular God Wars isn't up to your speed, again teleport to 27 Wild and go to the Wilderness God Wars dungeon. The Spiritual Mages in here will then drop an Ecumenical Key 1 out of 50 times, which you can high alchemy for like 50 or 60k, or you could keep it and get into uh, any God Wars dungeon boss without getting the KC. There's also Aviancy in here that note the bars every single time, but again, watch out for PKers.
Coming in at number 5, the Brutal Black Dragon. These dragons were so good of a monster to kill, the bots started taking over and Jagex did have to implement a 77 Slayer requirement. You would definitely want a high range level and some pretty good gear, although I do see peers, you know, killing these as well, just on like black DI'd and a leather body, so whatever works for you. If you are rich enough, definitely use a dragon crossbow or a dragon hunter crossbow. If not, just use a blowpipe, and if not, use a rune crossbow with like ruby bolts and stuff. Make sure you guys are using the extended antivire potions, not the regular ones, or the super antivire potions, which require no shield and you can use a book or you know whatever you choose. You would also want to get your hands on the Xerix Talisman because these monsters are on the new island of Zaya and you could also bring a soul bearer which uh, you know keeps your insult heads because you do get quite a bit of them each trip. Although the brutal black dragons do have 315 HP we can see the drops are honestly insane 10k every single kill it's basically like a KBD but it drops a dragon full helm and a visage at a pretty high rate. Up next, a Lizardman Shaman, you do need 100% Shazy in house favor, don't forget about that. There was a safe spot about a year ago when Raids 1 came out, where you didn't need any, any favor at all, and people would just sit there like low level peers with a crystal bow, or uh, even a dark bow on long range. These things really aren't too hard, only 150 combat with 150 hit points, although they jump around quite a bit, and they do tag team you, and I might as well bring a cannon since they do that anyway. If you do happen to bring a cannon, it will attract the other ones depending on where you set it up, so watch out for that. The regular drops from the Lizardman Shamans are quite good, including a whole bunch of rune items, seeds, you know, mage seeds, yew seeds, palm seeds, definitely go kill them, it even drops a dragon warhammer, although it's 1 out of 5,000 drop rate. Also, before we jump into the next one, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe with the bell notification on. Honestly, don't don't leave me hanging like that. I put a lot of effort in this video. You guys see all these, uh, you know, Photoshop, Photoshop thumbnails and stuff. It took a long time to make these. Hopefully, you guys do enjoy. Let's get on with it. Up next at number 3, the Rune Dragon. The requirements are decently high with the completion of Dragon Slayer 2. I would also recommend about 110 combat. You will be using melee stats the whole time and you know melee gear. So full bandos, all that good stuff is really going to help. The Rune Dragons have a combat level of 380, 330 hit points. You would definitely want to bring insulated boots. That's going to save you a lot of food. They hit quite hard with their lightning strikes. I'd say Rune Dragons is easily 1.5 mil to like 2 mil an hour, maybe 1 mil if you're not the most efficient at killing them. With every dragon defeated, you'll get a Runeite bar and a pair of dragon bones, plus you can get dragon limbs, draconic visage, and a dragon metal lump. Number 2 Demonic Gorillas Another steep requirement with Monkey Madness 2 completed. You might want to consider getting 85 melee stats and 85 range before even attempting these on a Slayer task. That is the cool thing about these, if you actually get a Black Demon task, you can go and kill these and it counts, so way better gold of course than Black Demons. You would also want to get an Arc Light, a Serotomy God Sword helps out quite a bit, will make your trips last at least 10 kills longer. These gorillas have some pretty good uncommon drops, including the seeds just like the shaman, but the big thing we're after is a Zenai shard for 13 mil. High level crafters use this new shard with the uncut onyx to make, you know, the torture amulet, the necklace of anguish, and the tormented bracelet. Yes, number one, Revenants, you may have guessed it, the best monster in the game to kill. The cool thing about Revenants, you could be level 3 and just go around and loot, you could be level 50, kill the Imps and the Hobgoblins, or you even could be level 120 and kill the Revenant Dragon and the Revenant Knight. The biggest requirement here is a Bracelet of Ethereum for 45k in the Grand Exchange, this will make it so no Revenant ever attacks you, but it won't work against PKers. You could just buy a Rev Cave Teleport for like 27k or use a Burning Amulet to go to the you know KBD Lava Maze and run east. I would definitely get a looting bag if you are going to do these and if you plan to camp like 100 hours of Revenants, maybe consider getting 80 agility then you could use a Summer Pie and hop over the South Escape 
and you know, you'll get away from many clans, especially the newbie ones. The Salvami E will give you 15% more damage and accuracy against anything undead, so definitely use it against these revenants, and you could also bring a high DPS weapon, although there's not as many players as there used to be, so you don't have to out DPS anyone, a blowpipe should work fine. Alright, so a huge tip, no one knew this until literally 4 days before making this video, if you kill revenants while scold, you have a 3 times chance to roll onto, you know, the high rare drop tables. So might want to consider it, but, but watch out, don't risk anything too crazy, you'll get PK in like 10 minutes, I guarantee it. The prices of the new staff, the Vigorous Chain Mace, and the Crossbows do fluctuate quite a bit. They were like 300 mil each, but they are slowly dropping, and of course there's ancient statues, magic seeds, and it's honestly one of the best monsters to kill. If you haven't killed Revenants this far in RuneScape, you, you, need, you need to go try it out right now. You can easily walk away with 2 to 4 mil if you keep an eye out for PKers, you make sure to teleport so you don't lose any loot, and you could even get lucky and you know get a big drop, so definitely one of the best monsters in the game over 4 mil an hour. Feel free to let me know what monster is looking the best for you, for your account, which one you're going to go kill, and also don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you are new with the bell notification on. Big shout out to the sponsor of the channel, Audible. Make sure you guys check it out. Have a good one guys. Thank you. See ya.